Blood is the most important part of your body. It contains erythrocytes or red blood cells. These blood cells make up almost half of your whole blood. They pick up oxygen and carry it around your body amongst other vital things. Red blood cells are the rock stars of the blood system. They have a concave shape on both top and bottom that increases their surface area and allows them ultimate flexibility. They don't have a nucleus like other cells and sometimes, or all the time, prefer to live without some of their innards. What I mean is that since all blood cells want to do is move around oxygen to the body, they don't need to keep their nucleus or ribosomes. So they get rid of them after making a certain amount of hemoglobin, which gives them their concave shape. Since they don't have those organelles that do the repairs, they are short-lived things. The cell membrane goes through a lot, kind of like tires on a car, except they would rather be kind of flat and empty. The cell membrane goes through a lot, kind of like tires on a car, except they would rather be flat and empty. Outside of water and a couple other things, they're made up of mostly hemoglobin, which binds with and releases oxygen readily. I have a blood disorder called G6PD deficiency. My hemoglobin doesn't transport oxygen through my body properly, and some foods and medicines put me at risk of having what's called hemolytic anemia. So, back to the hemoglobin. These hemoglobin molecules are made up of four things. Four called heme, and four called globin. Obviously where we got hemoglobin. Globin protein chains are made up of beta globin and alpha globin with the red ring shaped heme molecule that has one iron atom in the middle. That iron atom is what makes our blood red. Iron is at the center of our blood. So you see why iron deficiency can be such a problem. There are other animals that use copper rich hemocyanin instead of iron, and this causes their blood to be blue. Each red blood cell can pick up about a billion oxygen molecules. Hematopoiesis, or the production of red blood cells, happens inside our bones in the soft marrow. They eventually get killed or, or more so recycled by macrophages that are in the spleen and the liver. They're broken down into basic components and go back into new red blood cells. Something we've been taught since childhood is that we're all the same on the inside. That being, two animals of the same species should be able to procreate. The fact that all people aren't able to mate with all other people shows that there is something inherently different about us. Today we wage war and commit all kinds of acts of violence over race, which is a social construct invented by ignorant people posing as scientists. Intermixing races has no detrimental consequences for parent or offspring, yet the mixing of people with opposing RHD factors can be fatal. An RH negative mother who gets pregnant by an RH positive father will have an immune reaction to the presence of the RHD antigen on the cell membrane of the child and can cause miscarriage if not treated properly. In modern times, the risk of this happening has reduced dramatically, yet it still begs the question, if two things are the same species, they should be able to procreate, right? Maybe there's more to this than with talk. Maybe someone lied to us. I mean, we say we're all the same. Yet, new discoveries in the human genome and anthropological evidence constantly speak to the contrary. I'm David Royal, and I connect dots. Join me as I try to separate fact from fiction, investigating what the belief give them the right to rule as we find out what's in a bloodline. Blood types. Blood type is based on two different systems, the ABO and the RH factor. Red blood cells have what are called antigens. These are surface markers on the red blood cell membrane. Think of antigen as not coming from your genes. So, an antigen is anything that triggers your immune system. It's only been since the 1900s that Western science even acknowledged the difference of blood types. Prior to this knowledge, of course, there were complications with introducing blood with conflicting markers on the surface. What I'm saying is, they used to try and do blood transfusions using animal blood and was confused about the fatalities that ensued. The ABO system. 
The antigens of the ABO blood group are sugars and come from the transfer of sugar units. How that works is determined by the types of enzymes your DNA says you should have, and therefore the type of sugar antigens that will be present. In the ABO system, A and B are the most important. Our bodies produce antibodies against the A and B antigens unless they are found on that person's red blood cells. The thing to remember really is that the antibodies and antigens should never meet up in a person's body. There are four categories in the ABO system. O, which according to LiveScience.com is the most common with 45% of the US population under its banner. The A antigen is the second most common with 40% of the US being that. B is 11 and the rarest blood type is AB with only 4% of the US population carrying that designation. But what does all that mean, brother? Well, that means blood group O has neither A nor B antigens and have antibodies against both of them. This means they have to get blood from group O, but can give it to anyone. Blood group A has A antigens and antibodies against B antigens. They can receive blood from A or O and give blood to A or AB. Blood type B has the B antigen and antibodies against A. People with this blood type can get blood from O and B, then give blood to B or AB. Now we come to the AB group. Folks with these have both A and B antigens, but no antibodies against them. That means that they, with the absence of said antibodies, can receive blood from any other group, but only give blood to other AB blood types. Introducing conflicting antigens and antibodies will stimulate an immune system response called an ABO incompatibility reaction, which may be fatal. Let's get to the RH system. The antigens in the RH blood groups are proteins and your DNA has the info for producing these antigens. The RH gene encodes the D antigen. The RH antigen, which is named after the rhesus monkey, is named so because of the similarities in the way it is encoded between the rhesus monkey and some people. This antigen was discovered by German scientists in 1937 and is a fundamental difference in the makeup of blood. Now, some people use this difference in our blood as a way to prove that their right to be kings and queens of the planet is in their blood. It's easy to simply dismiss this fact and go on about life. But the simple fact that the people who are actually powerful enough to make the rules that govern our world believe this means that we need to examine more information about our blood. These fundamental differences in our blood point to a break or a difference in the development of our species. They're archaic and don't make much difference in the world today but they do prove that we are not all the same. There's no shortage of conspiracy theory dealing with bloodlines, blood types, and DNA. Some of the more far-fetched, like David Icke with the reptilians and the tales from the time loop, I don't personally subscribe to. I don't doubt the existence of extraterrestrial or intraterrestrial beings and entities, that come in and out of our terrestrial plane and vibration or energetic frequency or dimension. All I'm saying is that I see no real evidence in any of the videos or any of the research that I've done that convinced me it's worth speaking about definitive. I'm open-minded and if anyone has any suggestions or can offer any proof of the following or the preceding stuff, I'm all ears. So one thing, all the presidents are RH negative related and are reptilian or a reptilian hybrid species that rules the world. RH negatives are aliens. Um, RH positives are descended from monkeys, rhesus monkeys. Yes. And um, RH negatives are more intelligent and also more susceptible to MK Ultra program. Now, some of these things sound crazy, but what sounds crazy to some may be actual fact for others. So, as we go forward, we want to keep that in mind and um, take things with 
or observe things and research things with a critical open mind. And remember, there are things outside of our realm of understanding. And in order to learn more, we have to sit back, examine information as is given to us, do our own research and have our own experience. With that being said, if I said anything in this video that interests you, sparks your intrigue, or that you think somebody else should know, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you're alerted when we have new content. Other than that, see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.